Hi, I'm Kathy Conard with Turf Trade. 2020 was an exceptionally hard year for turf grass. Many of you probably had phosphites in your turf management program to help to maximize disease control and increase your plant health. There are so many companies selling phosphites and it's easy just to lump them all together thinking they're all the same. A phosphite's a phosphite, right? Unfortunately, it's not that easy. This presentation will give you a few questions that you can ask and also some information to help you easily sift through all the phosphite prospects and help you to find a reliable one. One that will give you predictable disease control. And there are even formulations that manage water within the turf cell and enhance turf metabolic and biological processes. That way you can get better drought or heat tolerance and you can also stimulate natural auxin production to help you with faster recovery of those dinged up areas. So what's in the phosphite that you're buying? In order to truly get enough fungicidal activity to control pythium, you need at least three pounds of elemental acid in the product. This is not the combined acid or the reacted acid, but elemental acid. Unfortunately, it's difficult for us to know how much elemental acid is in a product because the label only shows the combined or total reacted acid. It shows the total weight or percentages of all the reacted ingredients, not the percentage of elemental acid. And only the percentage of elemental acid tells you how much fungicidal activity you're actually going to be able to get. So how do we determine how much elemental acid is available if it's not on the label? You could ask your salesperson, you could ask a researcher at the company. I don't know that I would wanna take somebody's word on that. Um, and you guys know, I mean, I'm not only a technical rep, I sell as well. And I tell my customers, don't take my word, find out, do the test, do the research, check research. Well, there are two ways to determine how much acid elemental acid is in a product. The first method, unfortunately, is really not um, a reliable way and not viable for us because it's the iodine titration extraction method, but it takes a very long time and it's extremely expensive. It actually was the initial EPA validation test method for all phosphites uh, that were submitted for registration but it runs a minimum of $4,000. So again, not viable. But there's another test that you can do. And what the lab does is they do a battery of fertilizer lab analysis for NPK, sodium, ammonium, specific gravity, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then they can do some back calculations to find out what percentage of elemental acid is in the product. There are labs uh, that do this. If you're interested, text me, email me, call me. I'll be happy to share it with you. And these uh, fertilizer, this fertilizer testing is actually only anywhere from $200 to $400, depending on the lab. So not expensive to do. Um, and that way, you know what's in the products that you are purchasing. Um, and talk with the manufacturer's reps, talk with your salespeople, maybe they'll, they'll split that with you, that, that cost with you. So we know that we need at least three pounds of elemental acid to truly get pythium control and have enough fungicidal activity. Um, but how products are reacted is also extremely important because how the products are reacted, what they're reacted with is also gonna determine the safety of those products and how well that they work as far as fungicidal activity. So products that I, I got a little, you know, I said what reactions yield the best slash worst product formulations, maybe worst is, is too harsh a word, um, but I wanted you to see the differences in the way products are reacted. And this information is typically on the label. Um, and if not, again, talk with talk with your reps. So products that are reacted with potassium or potassium hydroxide tend to be the better choice. They have very low salt indices. They are plant available. It gives you a more predictable uh, disease control. They have a low osmolality rating 
osmolality is the rating um, that's basically test uh, foliar injury, potential for foliar injury. And they're more compatible with micronutrients. Products that are reacted with ammonium and sodium tend to be less expensive to make. They are less expensive to make, but they have a higher salt index. Ammonium and sodium do not contribute to increased disease control. They only add weight to the product. They increase your salt content, and they can also adjust or buffer the pH of the product. Ammonium in the product is not plant available. It must be converted first. Sodium, we know, is just harmful to all plants, regardless of the rate. For those of you that were using products that were reacted with ammonium and sodium and may have had a lower phosphoric acid, elemental phosphoric acid compound, maybe that's why you saw that some of the phosphites didn't last as long during this very stressful 2020 season. Just a few more things when you're choosing a phosphite. On the last slide, I mentioned the product osmolality rating that measures the potential for foliar injury. Uh, osmolality ratings uh, go between zero to 2000. Obviously, the higher you go, the more your potential for uh, injury because of the salt content. The other things to consider are what can you safely tank mix it with? No one is going out without um, you know, more than one product into a tank mix. So what can the phosphite safely be mixed with? Again, this is going to re you know, relate to how much salt is in that product. Uh, does it crystallize? Is it going to separate it out? Do you have to shake before use? Uh, do you need agitation in the tank? Are there special storage recommendations? All of these need to be asked uh, before you, you buy your phosphites. We know that if you are using a potassium phosphite with a low salt index, low osmolality rating, and at least three pounds of elemental acid along with your fungicide, you are going to be able to slow the growth of the pathogen. You are also going to help the turf to release the stress metabolites and allow for increased time for the plant to initiate its own defense responses. If you choose a phosphite that has other things added to it, silicon, amino acids, um, there are different things, you know, water management amino acids, we know you're going to better help the turf to protect, defend, and survive throughout even the extreme environmental conditions. I thank you today for your time. If I can help you in any way or you have questions, please feel free to text me, call me at 609-477-0471. Or you can email me at Kathy, K-A-T-H-Y-C, at theturftrade.com. Thank you again.